what's your uh, favorite healing modalities for self-care and again, self-improvement? It's multifaceted in my opinion. I'll just share with you my healing process and what healed me, man. When I was broken down and I was in a, in a situation where I was full of guilt, shame, depression for the pain I put in that wasn't necessarily righteous, trying to create an image for myself and just everything just going all the way astray. You know what I mean? Uh, when I didn't know, I didn't know where to go and I didn't know what to do. And I was completely lost. I went inside to myself and on that day, which was March 15th, 2008, I remember summer 2007, it was when I was like turned up and to the max. The whole process took many years, started when I was eight years old, that process of becoming that person that I thought was real. Uh, when I was brainwashed and the thinking was real, you know, um, I didn't know where to go and I didn't know what to do, but I realized that everything from this world comes and goes. Nothing in this world is, nothing in this world lasts. The only thing that lasts is God. And the only thing that will never forsake you is your inner conscience. So I would say connect to your own inner conscience. Don't follow no man. Don't follow no book, because when you're vulnerable like that, that's when you get people come along and try to mis mislead you. Like you don't follow, don't follow nobody. Follow your own inner self. And then the mind is tricks, the mind plays tricks. It starts to make you think it's coming from your spirit, but it's coming from your mind. So the trick to that is to be clean so you can have that discernment. When you gotta clean your mind. You gotta fight against your, you know, addictions and attachments, and you just gotta instead stand strong and not give in to your addictions and be healthy, clean habits. So number one, connect to your inner conscience. I connected to my inner conscience and I listened to it. It didn't make sense, but I did it anyway. It told me to go sit down in the library and study. I wasn't in school. I had bills to pay. I didn't have an income other than what I was doing. I didn't, it said stop doing all that and live clean. And God provided down to my last penny. Uh, you know, and when I was down to my last, I submitted. A lot of us commit crimes because we're scared of the future. And we like we might have like a little bit now, but we scared tomorrow will be broke. When you submit to God, tomorrow will be provided for us. You do the right thing now. So you got to train yourself to focus on submitting to God instead of chasing after things for this world. So you got to fast on the world. You know, we got to get I had to give up drinking, smoking, chasing after women. I never really was into like chasing after women and money. That wasn't my twist. I was really more so wanted respect. And what I thought was respect, was, you know, being like a violent person when in reality, the, you get much farther just being a helpful person. But also being a solid person and being prepared to defend yourself is, you know, that's just regular. That's, that's you know, that's your, every man, every woman, every person should be able to do that. So that also makes sense that you ride to protect your friends and all that type of stuff. So what I'm trying to say is, number one, submit to your inner conscience and listen to what it is. Work. You got to do the right work. Don't chase after money, but do the work that we all have something in our mind that we want to make this world a better place. Ever since a kid, it always come back to us and back to us. You got to serve God by working and doing the right work. And that's hard to find, but you got to find what it is your purpose is. And the only way to do that is to try different things. So doing the work, working hard, training, you know, you don't have to read a bunch of books. You don't even have to read if you can't read, but you got to train. You got to train to get your skill sets and to improve your skills, to master your craft. And then training martial arts is something I 100% support. It's what saved my life. Uh, I trained the art a couple of uh, martial arts in terms of like jiu-jitsu, boxing, the whole nine. Pick a martial art is a way to be healthy, helps you, you know, gives you motivation to get in shape. Group activities is always good to be a part of. Um, and then live clean and just stop putting any types of toxins into your body. You know, look at women with a clean mind, lust, greed, anger, addictions, attachments, egos. You got, we got to get you got rid of that anger. It's just the process day by day. So whenever you do feel those things that pull on you, you got to remember God and focus and worship on God's name and repent from those sins. 
and just work hard. That's really my process of healing. It's like, it's a true battle. Like I come from a background, you know, my guru taught me, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, he's somebody, he's a, a, a guru from Sikhi. Long story short, he said a lot of beautiful things. He said that this path towards God is a battle. There's no getting around that. And very few are those who even acknowledge that it's a battle. And of those who acknowledge that there's a battle, even less of them are willing to fight that battle. And the rarest of the rare are those who are actually victorious in that battle. And a true warrior is he or she who fights to reveal God's love. As what Guru Nanak said, this is the knowledge of my ancestors that makes perfect sense. So it's the transition from, you know, to whatever, to becoming a warrior. And a warrior is someone who fights for the sake of love and justice and realizing that the only enemies are inside us. So we have to fight against our, no man or woman can be my enemy. It's only, there is not possible. Only enemies are anger, lust, greed, addictions, attachments, ego, and pride inside of us. Now, another man can be overcome by their enemies and try to attack me out of greed because they greedy and want to take my stuff or anger or whatever the case may be. And if I'm wrong, I got to apologize and figure out what I did to trigger that person. And if I'm wrong, I need to apologize and make it right. If I didn't do anything wrong and they just in the wrong attacking me, then you protect and you de defend yourself out of love love for justice there's no hatred involved it's just that i love justice and i love you know i love justice and i love life more than i'm more than letting you take that from me. and i think that's where all the healing comes from loving yourself and really understanding what really love is you know what i'm saying just understanding which and and love protects you try to put all those concepts in a word i think is love is what comes out of like, but true, genuine love, not attachment. I'm talking about really genuine, solid love that's, you know, when you love yourself, love justice, you know what I mean? 